guys, Coach Scott here with HoopSense. Today we're going to be looking at full court presses and how to break them successfully no matter what kind of press they're playing. First thing we've got to look at is why do teams actually press? One, they want to speed up the pace of play. They definitely want the opponents to play out of control so that they can force turnovers. Uh, two, they want to eliminate half court offense. A lot of teams are really good in the half court and not so great in the full court, so teams use their athleticism and their quickness to put pressure on them in the full court and really speed up the game and not allow them to get into that half court set. Three, they want to expose bad ball handling, and by ball handling that can be anything from catching the ball and being strong with it, actually dribbling the ball, or even passing the ball. And then lastly, we are going to use a press if we're trying to overcome a deficit. A lot of teams will go to a press in the second half or towards the end of the game after they have lost the lead. And in theory, that's going to cause a lot of turnovers, help them gain some momentum. But if you can just understand these core concepts that I'm going to give you today, and we can slow down our pace of play, this shouldn't happen to your team. All right, so our three key concepts to break the press. Number one, the most important thing I will teach you in this video is every single time one of your players catches a ball out of a press break, they must rip, face, and ball fake. This has to be automatic. We drill and drill and drill and drill this when we do our press break stuff. Any press break that you throw out into a press is going to be unsuccessful if you don't do these three things. And you're asking, do we ball fake every single time? Yes. We teach them as soon as they face up, they're making a ball fake. It just helps to create chaos with the defense, and it helps to create open spaces for our offense to move into. Number two, passes can never be thrown backwards towards the opponent's basket. I see this all the time with press break. We throw the ball in, player steps on the floor, they throw it right back to the player that threw it in. That is an awful time to catch the ball for anyone in a press break because not only are you right under the opponent's basket, but you put a lot of pressure on that guy that's stepping onto the court. All the defense wants is to take that pass and not have to move at all and shoot a layup, and it only takes three or four seconds out of the entire game. We try to completely eliminate ever throwing the ball backwards, and when we get into our diagrams and our, our, our actual press break, you'll see what I mean by this. And then thirdly, all players must move together and fill open spots on the floor. When you're running a press break, you kind of got to look at it as a zone defense in terms of like football strategy. We have to find open spots on the floor. As much as I would, like I said earlier, as much as I'd like to just draw up a play and give it to you and say, go here, go here, it doesn't exactly work like that. You have to teach your players to find the open spots on the floor and get into those gaps so that we can advance the ball down the floor. So how do we actually break the press? Next, we're going to look at, for me as a coach, the only thing that I teach my players, it works against a man-to-man -man press, it works against a zone press, it works against a trapping press. As long as you understand those basic concepts and you move together like I'm going to show you, you can break any press. All right, let's take a look. All right, here's the press break that we teach to our players. Uh, we just call this wheel. It's essentially a four-across set. The biggest difference with our press break is that we put our four and our five men in the middle, whereas most teams would put their one and two or two and three guys in the middle. Uh, we actually don't want to get the ball to our best ball handler to start. I know that sounds counterintuitive, but every defense is looking to take away the best ball handler when it comes to the press. So we don't even want to get into that situation. Our biggest concern is getting the ball in safely facing the court, and then advancing the ball. We are going to try not to dribble at all. So we don't really care if our best ball handler gets the ball. So the way this is going to work is our two bigs are set in the middle. Our two and three guy are on the wings, and then our one guy is taking it out. Now, does your point guard have to take the ball out of bounds? No. It can be any other guy. We just want to make sure that our two biggest guys are in the middle. The reason we do that is normally the defense isn't going to be as concerned with the bigs as they are with the guards, and so hopefully this allows our entry pass from out of bounds to be super easy. 
So the way this is going to go is if we need to, our four and five man can interchange or set a screen to get open. If they're standing wide open and no one's guarding them, obviously we're just going to throw it to them and they don't have to set that action. Now, once their exchange is made, we're going to make our entry pass to either four or five. We'd love to get it ball side. That's the best place to get it. We don't want to go much lower than the free throw line. Like we said before in the video, we don't want to be down towards the opponent's basket any more than we have to. Once we make our entry pass, the first thing that's going to happen is the other big, so whether it's four or five, is going to flash immediately to the direct center of the court. As soon as he flashes, our ball side wing, so you can see that the ball is closest to player three, and he is going to flash straight to half court, just like our big did, but he's going to fill this side of the court. As soon as our entry pass is made from out of bounds, our one man is going to fill where the ball side wing just left from. So now you can see our set. We have nobody behind the ball. We don't want to even tempt our players into throwing the ball backwards, so we don't keep anyone back there. Once these three actions have been made, now what's going to happen is our wheel. We're going to swing it to our two-man, and this option, either passing it to two or one, you can do either one of them, and we'll cover the other scenario next. But on this one, we're going to say we make a skip pass over to two, and now our wheel action is going to happen. Five is going to flash from the middle towards the ball. Three is flashing from half court right to the center. And then you can guess where one is going to go. He's just going to fill where three was at. So now what we've done is we've kept the floor spread. We are not going backwards, and we're trying to fill open areas of the floor. On the diagram right here, it looks like they're just running to a spot. But when we teach this in practice, we have these players fill the open areas. So if we had a defense on here and we had defense set, we would want to go somewhere where the defense is not. We would not want to run directly to where the defense is standing. We're trying to find an open area. Now, after our wheel is run and we've faced and we've ripped and we've ball faked, we're going to advance. Let's say we hit the guy in the middle. This is the ideal scenario. Our one and our five man are then going to break. And then hopefully we have some sort of three on two kind of action and we can advance for an easy layup. Now, that's the ideal circumstance. I understand that's not going to happen every time, but that's what we're looking for. In this entire scenario, our goal is to not have any dribbles. We do not want to throw it backwards. We don't want to have any dribbles. And we want to catch, rip, face, and ball fake every single time. If you keep all these principles alive, normally your press break is going to work pretty well. So let's go over our other side. So instead of uh, making that skip pass, let's see what happens if we make a ball side pass. So here's our second scenario. It's going to start the exact same way. Four and five are going to interchange. We're going to make our entry pass. Our big is going to flash to the middle. Our wing is going to flash to half court. Our inbounder is going to fill ball side. Now, instead of skipping to two, what happens if we get the pass back to one? So if we pass to one, now we're still going to have a semi-wheel action. We just aren't going to have the exact kind of wheel action we had last time. This time, since three is closest to the ball, we're going to send him out. We're going to send him kind of down the floor into an open area. And now we're going to run our wheel. Five is going to flash and fill where three left. Two is going to fill where five left. And then from there, four would go on the back side to keep our spacing. Essentially, you're all just moving together, and you're trying to find open spots on the floor without going backwards. From here, we would do just like we did last time, make pass, hopefully to the center of the floor, break our press, and get an easy shot. Now, these are things that you have to practice. Once again, most plays, I know a lot of coaches are looking for plays to run, but most plays take time, and especially the press break takes time to teach and work on these things daily in practice and get the idea of finding open spots. You can really put restrictions on these drills. Have them do no dribble. See if they can advance the ball down the floor against any type of press without dribbling. If they can get to that point, they'll be able to break any press that's thrown at them. So this is our four across wheel press break with all the concepts involved. And if you can drill this and get pretty good at it, I feel very confident that you can press 
you can break any press that's thrown at you. All right, guys, thanks a lot. We're trying to get daily videos out. We really want to get tutorials out to all the coaches who want them. Everything we do is for free. We're not trying to hide anything. We just love to spread the word. So like it, subscribe, and we really look forward to making relationships with some of you. So leave those comments, and we will get back the best we can. All right, thanks a lot, guys. Mm -hmm.